Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the first trailer for The Flash, released during DC Fandom, teasing the upcoming Flashpoint event confirmed to cross over Barry Allen into alternate timelines that include Michael Keaton Batman from the Tim Burton films, as well as Ben Affleck returning as his version of Batman, and Ezra Miller playing multiple variants of himself? Huh? Looks like DC is reclaiming its timeline crossover from Marvel, who's trying to beat them to the punch with their own franchise callback parade in Spider-Man No Way Home. Hey, I'm here for both of them, just to keep Michael Keaton as confused as possible as to what franchise he's in. Are you Peter or Barry? I'm Will, and I'll be Adam Warlock, but this is Dope Sick on Hulu. After I reacted to this Flash trailer, I have since discovered even more details that help explain this Flashpoint movie's convoluted plot, how Barry from the DC films ended up in a shared universe with Keaton Batman, essentially to explain to Michael Keaton, if you are watching, the exact nature of this multiplicity copy of a copy logic with the multiple Barry Allens. And let's actually start there, with the two Barry Allens in the final shot, or at least two characters played by Ezra Miller. The first First one in the center has shorter hair and wears the new tech-infused suit that we've seen in other shots in this trailer. And then the one on the left has longer hair and, if you look closely, is actually wearing a bat suit from the Michael Keaton era that's been customized with the bat emblem spray painted over with the Flash's yellow bolt logo. There's another shot that shows him doing the same with the Keaton era bat suit's boots. Both of these berries are arriving at Wayne Manor in a taxi from Central City. Now we know this is the Wayne Manor from the Keaton films with the same exact architecture and gate and gothic statues out front. And then the iconic Batman cowl from the Keaton era steps up in the Batcave with computer terminals and metal railings and circuit breakers all matching those in the Batcave from Batman 1989 and Batman Returns 1992. However, we should know that the Batcave in those films did not have a waterfall. The waterfall was added by Christopher Nolan for his Dark Knight trilogy, but the cobwebs and covering sheets may imply a passage of time in which Bruce Wayne may have made some structural changes like blowing out a cave wall to give him easier water access, or this could be yet another variant universe from the original Keaton Burton timeline. But either way, what is going on in this movie? Well, this Flash movie is adapting the 2011 Flashpoint Paradox event from the DC Comics, in which Barry Allen uses a cosmic treadmill to go back in time to stop the murder of his mother, Nora Allen, which his father, Henry Allen, was falsely convicted of. And we learn that the murder was actually committed by future time traveler Eobard Fawn, aka Reverse Flash, who snuck back through time using his own kind of speed force based on negative emotions in order to try to kill Barry Allen as a child, but ended up killing Nora Allen instead. All of this timeline meddling causes Barry to cross over into the Flashpoint timeline, which is kind of a post-apocalyptic world where Batman is not Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne was killed in this timeline, setting up his father, Thomas Wayne, to become Batman. The Flashpoint Paradox storyline ends up getting resolved with DC moving forward with the New 52 series. But the DC films have been implying they may be heading in a similar direction just in need of one big crossover storyline to establish the rules of the DC multiverse and its various Elseworlds. Like in the Justice League Snyder Cut, Barry visited Henry and vowed to prove his innocence, but Henry warned in some new dialogue, I can't sit here and watch you run in place in Central City for some old dude. Yeah, run in place, a nod perhaps to the cosmic treadmill. Zack Snyder also added dialogue and scenes directly tying Barry's speed force to time travel. I'm gonna be able to jump start it. I don't like to break this rule, but when I approach the speed of light, I look, crazy things happen to time. Barry ends up reversing time to sync the mother box with his jolt, and doing this triggered Cyborg's dark premonition, showing Darkseid conquering Earth, killing Wonder Woman and Aquaman, Joker's implied bombing of the Batcave, killing Lois Lane that turned Superman against the Justice League, and setting up that whole nightmare epilogue to the Snyder Cut, the future that Barry Allen in Batman v Superman was trying to warn Bruce Wayne about. Now, Zack Snyder has suggested that his nightmare epilogue was really set in a separate microverse than the ongoing DC EU, but now in this Flashpoint story, it's probably going to be one of many Elseworld timelines that Barry could be crossing in and out of, just like we saw him do in the CW Grant Gustin Barry Allen Crisis of Infinite Earths event. Now, yes, I obviously consume a lot of content, and to help me get through it all, I like to snack. I'm kind of an expert on pairing snacks with content. Phase one MCU, go for chicken fingers and tater tots. Digging into some what if for Loki, gummy bears and Twizzlers all day. But when it comes to pairing wine with food, I'm much less confident in my picks.
drinks. For advice on which wine to drink with which food, I lean on our friends at Bright Cellars. And thanks to Bright Cellars for sponsoring this video. Bright Cellars uses a quiz to determine your taste preferences, and then they show you a list of the top six wines that you're most likely to enjoy from around the world. And if you like your recommendations and you want to try them, they'll ship them straight to your door. They educate you about wine along the way with their wine education cards that have useful info like tasting notes and pairing recommendations. A wine uh, from Bright Cellars. So normally I'm a red guy, but I want to go for a white and they sent me a meat cute, which does not have a, a meat flavor, but it's got stone fruits like peaches, nectarines, and apricots with soft perfume florals like honeysuckle in the aroma. I like all those flavors. I can't wait to give this one a shot. I've received a bunch of boxes from Bright Cellars over the past year. Based on my feedback, they always adjust the wines they send me. And Bright Cellars is giving our followers 50% off their six bottle box. And the first 100 people to check out will get a free corkscrew. So follow that link and take the quiz to get started. So I think now after his graduation in Justice League, but before the dark side apocalypse would ever begin, Barry's work with the Central City Crime Lab will unearth evidence about Nora's murder that Barry will now need to reverse time to go back to that night to fix. But interestingly in this trailer, we see two versions of Barry returning to that house. A nighttime shot of Barry in his futuristic new suit, and then a morning shot of Barry in casual wear finding Nora in the kitchen. One theory is that this second shot is our Barry from the main timeline finding his mother alive, and instead the nighttime shot may actually be reverse flash the night he kills Nora, meaning since Miller is wearing this same suit in the final shot, that Miller could also be playing reverse flash in this movie. Reverse flash in the comics does undergo surgery at one point to look more like Barry Allen. And then all these shots in Wayne Manor could be reverse flash crossing over into the Keaton Burton timeline on a recruiting mission, putting together a team to stop our original Barry from fixing his past. And that long haired Barry on the left could be the Barry from that Keaton Burton timeline, aware of the Batman as a Gotham legend long after Bruce Wayne was outed and retired, becoming a recluse. And so they go to his estate to try to use Wayne's gear to give this Barry a new suit and then run into Bruce Wayne and are able to trick the old man into joining the team alongside Sasha Kaye playing this timeline Supergirl all to stop our original Barry who in another timeline is working with his original Ben Affleck Batman so that would kind of give us two teams team one DCEU Ezra Miller Flash plus Ben Affleck Batman versus Ezra Miller as Eobard Vaughn reverse Flash plus Keaton Burton timeline Barry Allen and that timeline Supergirl as well as Michael Keaton Batman that could be why we hear Michael Keaton's voice asking in this trailer. Tell me something. You can go anywhere you want, right? Any timeline, any universe. Why do you want to stay and fight to save this one? Yeah, this Batman would be rightly asking what this guy is doing here in this universe. And the question is valid because Reverse Flash is actually here on deceitful pretenses. But of course, we could be overthinking it. And it's often the case here in the Rockstars. This nighttime shot and morning shot may be the same Barry. The night he prevented the death, he actually does see a lamp turn on, suggesting someone else is inside there. And the next morning, after he saved Nora. The futuristic suit may just be a new suit that he designed after the events of Justice League. Like there's a close up of his ring, which Barry uses to store his suit that spreads out to its form fitting shape around his body. And there's also a shot of the longer haired Barry covering Iris West. Barry in this shot wears that ring. So it's possible that both of these Barrys are the flash from their respective timelines. And the reason our Barry came to the Keaton Burton timeline to answer Bruce's question from the teaser is that this may yet be the timeline that Eobard Thawne originated from. And by saving this timeline and giving Keaton Batman a new purpose. They're trying to prevent Thon from ever becoming a time traveling threat to our Barry Allen and his family. But ultimately, I think two takeaways are true after seeing this teaser. One, that the Keaton Burton timeline, while important, will not be the only alternate DC timeline this movie exists in. And we may yet see the Flashpoint Thomas Wayne Batman timeline. I mean, we gotta have something for future trailers, right? And two, one of the Ezra Millers we see in this movie may very well be playing Reverse Flash Eobard Thawne. Only because because most of the other main cast in this film has already been announced and no heavy hitter yet confirmed for Reverse Flash. And while I still think Homelander actor Anthony Starr would be perfect for this role, I just think it's easier for Warner to keep it under wraps by having Miller double up in the role. Hey, if you like what we do here at New Rockstars, be sure to subscribe for breakdowns of everything that you love and support us by checking out our merch options at NewRockstarsMerch.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars on social media, and thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>